Peace be still. Hello, viewer. Welcome again to this program that you have grown to love so much. Peace be still. My name is Steve Ngolo, and I'm glad that we are sharing from the Word of God. Thank you so much for ever tuning to watch this and to continue with this series, for it is very, very precious to learn of God each and every single day. Again, allow me to mention out to you that these are the messages of hope. Such are the messages that we need right now. And Peace Be Still is a program that, of course, is bringing Christ right into our hearts. I love Jesus for one thing, that even when we are in turbulence, that when storms attack us and approach us from every direction, but he's still with us and he shouts it out and even whispers into our ears, my son, my daughter, peace, be still. Today, allow me again to reflect or to take our minds back to the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 35, running down to verse 41. Now, it's a story that we are well abreast with, a story that we know, and it's a real life story. I love the way Mark puts it, that these people, the disciples of Jesus together with Jesus, were living where they had done a whole day's evangelism, where they had been preaching to multitudes of people, and they are now moving to go and rest. And the Bible says that when they had left the multitude in verse 36, they took him along the way. Note, it is Jesus, it is the disciples of Jesus who took Jesus, meaning Christ was still in the ministry. Meaning, he was not even ready to leave at that particular time. But they took him, they said, hey master, you're getting tired of this. It's getting late. Look, let us go. And so they left. And when they took him, along with him, they took him into the boat as he was. And of course, there were little boats that were also with them. The Bible records that when they did this, verse 37, a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. I want you to picture the disciples of Jesus in this boat. If you look at verse 38 now, it's telling us that Jesus was asleep, yet Jesus was their master. Now look at them here. They are in the sea. They are in the ship. Then the waves are beating about. The Bible records that the water was even filling into the boat. What would be their state of mind? At this time, there is no peace in their heart. At this time, they are looking at themselves as people who are dying the next second. At this time, they are not anywhere where they can rely even on their own strength. Remember, Peter was a fisherman, and a host of them actually, they had worked in the sea and in the lake fishing. And so they knew so well how to take care of situations like that. But at this particular time, they were fearful. Bible records that these people, they had to wake up Jesus. Why were they waking Jesus when these people had lived all their lives in the sea, when they could actually do one or two? I want to bring it to your attention, dear viewer, that there are instances in our lives when the storms beat us all over. There are instances in our lives when there is no peace. There are instances when we experience anxiety, there are instances in our lives when we experience phobias, when we experience depression, and there are instances in our lives when we are just unhappy about everything. And these instances, believe me you, that at such times there is no peace of mind. Look at the economy right now. Look at yourself where you are. The cost of living has gone up. Meaning, at that instant, we fail to have peace of mind. How can you be peaceful when you don't have food over your table? How can you be peaceful 
when you have not paid your monthly rent? How can you be peaceful when your children are seated with you at home, yet their peers are in school? How can you be peaceful in instances when you have no one to turn to, when your relationship is going astray? How can you be peaceful? Yet, that was the situation where the disciples found themselves. They were unhappy with the moment. The waves were beating on their boat. The ship was sinking and they had to go to Jesus. Yes, they went to Jesus because the other name for Jesus is peace. All peace oozes from them. And the Bible records that when you awoke, when they woke him up, he stood and he swung into action and said, hey, peace, be still. And the waves and the winds ceased immediately. And that is the good news that I'm presenting to us today. That sometimes when we are worried of storms beating about us, there is a God in heaven. When we think that he's asleep, he's not sleeping. He's waiting for us to call upon his name and he's going to rise and give us that peace of mind. And therefore, whatever situation you are in today, whatever situation you are facing in your life, I want to proclaim from the words of Jesus, peace be still in your life. Because when you invite Jesus in your life, there is a lot of peace that comes from him. Allow me to share today some few suggestions that I have lined up on how to acquire this peace of Christ. How can we have the peace of mind that only comes from Jesus Christ? Few suggestions, about seven of them, that we will share and I will let you go about your duties today, knowing that there is God in heaven who thinks peace and who proclaims peace upon our lives. Suggestion number one, when you think you don't have peace of mind, the first thing that you should do, take part in the Great Commission. I know you're asking yourself, how is that possible? Now, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How many things? All these things. When God says all, it is all. So what does he want us to do? He wants us to seek his kingdom first. When we seek God's kingdom first, then he's going to add all unto us. All that we need, he will add unto us. And so the Great Commission is what we should be taking serious, that we should do our part to support that great mission and seek to have a cause greater than ourselves. What is the cause greater than ourselves? Seeking the kingdom of God and spreading his word. Let me take you to the Great Commission. The book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. The Bible says, a common verse says, before Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave his disciples what is called the Great Commission, proclaiming, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things and that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, this is the Great Commission. Christ is speaking to his disciples and is telling them, to go to all nations, go to all tribes, go to all tongues, and speak this great message. When we speak this great message, we are drawing people to Christ. And when we are drawing people to Christ, then Christ will give us a peaceful mind, mind that he requires of us. How I pray today that the first thing that is going to come out of us is the desire to spread the message of Jesus Christ, not only to our neighbors, but to all who are watching us, not only to our church members, but to tongues and tribes, not only to my tribe or where I come from, but I have to go about and seek to preach this gospel to others. And if we do this, I will be seeking the kingdom of God first, and therefore all shall be added unto me. And therefore, dear viewer, 
allow me to employ today that the greatest thing that we need to do to get this peace of mind or peace that surpasses our understanding is to rely on Jesus by carrying out the Great Commission as given in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. My second suggestion on how to get the peace of mind that maybe the disciples did not have when they were in that ship is to pray about your worries. Are you worried today? Yes, worries have become part of us, but there are things that requires us to pray about them. Whenever we pray about our worries, God will surely intervene. He is the same God who has told us to seek and we shall find. He is the same God who has told us to ask and we shall be given. His promises are sure. And therefore, if we present our worries to him in prayer, the Lord will surely hear of us and even attend to the peace that we require, peaceful mind that we need in this world where we live in. And so the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, Be anxious for nothing, for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, Paul is writing to the Philippians and is telling them something which is so dear. He tells them that you should not be anxious about anything. You should not worry about anything. Why? that these things that we are worried about, we only need to take them to God by prayer, number one, by supplication, number two, and lastly, by thanksgiving. And when we take our worries to the Lord by thanksgiving, we will enlist all that we want from him, the request, we will make them known to him, for co because that is what God is waiting for. And when this happens, the Bible records, or Paul continues and says, and the peace of God, not just any other peace, but peace that only comes from God. And Paul describes that peace. He says, this peace surpasses all understanding. The peace that comes from God, we are not able to understand it. We cannot even define it. That is what Paul says. He says, this peace is more than, it's bigger than our understanding. And this peace will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Beloved, look at the promises that God has for us. That if we do this, he's doing this for us. That is just how God operates. He says that if we pray and we pray in supplication, and thanksgiving, then God will guard our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We need to direct our prayers through Jesus Christ because Jesus came and died for our sins. Why? He wanted to give us the peace that we require, the peace of mind that only comes from him. And David says in the book of Psalms chapter 30 verse 10, that hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me, Lord. Be my helper. No one can help you in some instances. It is only God who can help us because he is always present at every opportunity, at every instant, in every worry. We all need to call upon him. And therefore, dear beloved, wherever you are, know that there is a God in heaven who is waiting for you to pray about your worries, to seek him and to go to him with what is disturbing you. For if we do that, we will be exchanging our heavy yoke with the lighter yoke that is there at Calvary. We only need to look at Calvary, for that is where our help and salvation comes from. My third suggestion, or the third suggestion that I would love us to share on how to get a peace of mind in Christ is seek wise counsel. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 14 to 15 says, Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. 
I have strength by me kings reign and rulers decree justice. God is speaking to us and it's quite interesting that God we serve is giving us a promise. He's telling us that counsel and wisdom is his and that is what we need to seek. First, seek the counsel and wisdom that comes from God. There is another favorite in the Bible, King Solomon. A story that we all know, that when God asked him, what do you want? King Solomon opted for wisdom. And the Bible says that when he asked for wisdom, God said, you did not ask for wealth. You did not ask for prosperity. You did not ask for this and that. What you would always ask for. But you simply went for wisdom. And therefore, Solomon, I'm going to give you wisdom and add you even many more. And therefore, to date, King Solomon lived a life that was well decorated than any other person ever lived on earth. And so I want to encourage you that wherever we are having a disturbed mind, there is one thing we should do and we can do, is to seek counsel and wisdom from God. My fourth suggestion, dear viewer, is something that is so dear to us. The fourth one, to getting peace of mind, is that we should not neglect physical exercise. There is much that we've been taught, especially in health reforms. And one of the things that comes up in, 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 in our abbreviation New Start is exercise. A Christian and a believer in God must always know that it is important to exercise. If you are in old age, you can do a simple walking from point A to point B and this will help your body tone down. And by the way, Paul writes to Timothy, a young man, a very young man, and he writes to him in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it says, For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And therefore, spiritual exercise, yes, will lead to eternal benefit. But again, you should know that we should not neglect the temporal benefit of physical exercise. Paul writes to Timothy, and I love the way he says, he says that for bodily exercise profits a little. Yes, a little is a profit that you get. And therefore, wherever you are, you should always make it a routine that there is an exercise that you should. When you do some exercise, or when you do exercise, then there are some sicknesses that will be keeping out of our bodies. And when we keep some diseases out of our bodies, then trust me you, you will be in a steady peace or a mind that is steady and is peaceful. And therefore, beloved, it is my encouragement today that wherever you are, you're not just going to sit and wait and only eat spiritual food, but we'll take a walk out there. If you can visit a nearest gym, please do. If you can play somewhere, run with the children, your children, or the neighbor's children, or you want to ride a bicycle, or go walk in the park, please do it for this one is a source of peace that we are talking about. And therefore, it is my encouragement today that even in our health reform, we are going to do some exercise, some little walk to keep our minds steady in the Lord and to focus more in Christ. For when we do that, we'll be appreciating nature, what God has created in us, and even what God said and came into being, the trees, the animals in the field, the birds in the air, and everything that worth appreciation to God Almighty. Number five, maintain a positive mind. If you want to be peaceful, then you have to keep a mind that is devoid of other things. James chapter 1 verse 2 tells us something. My brethren, this is what James says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. The trial certainly may be painful, but you view the process with joy. How? Now look at this, and you may ask how. James is trying to bring something that, hey, you will always fall into various trials and various temptations. But when that happens, count it all joy. How practical could that be? The Bible says that all things work well for the good of those who love God. And therefore, even temptations when they come, problems when they come, when we lose loved ones, when we lose our jobs, when our families are tattered, 
the Bible says that all these things are happening to us for the good of us who love Christ. And therefore we should count it joy. When we count it joy, that is the first process or the first step to healing and eternal healing. Who doesn't want to heal anyway? And James is giving us a recipe that if you want to heal, that, uh, then ours is just to count it all joy on all that is happening unto us. And again, our lives are not determined by what happens to us. That does not define us. What defines us is how we are with God Almighty. And therefore, the testing of our faith produces patience. When it produces patience, this patience should have a perfect work that we may be perfect and lacking nothing in the Lord Almighty. You want peace in God? Yes, there is a basic recipe to maintain a positive mind, positive attitude, and know that you are a winner, you are a conqueror, and that you are a child of God. Number six, count your blessings. You want to have a peaceful mind? The disciples did not count the blessings they had gotten in their walk with Jesus Christ. And so they were worried at one point. They were not peaceful. When the winds and the waves were beating about the ship, it was disturbing them. But today I want to bring you the good news today that we need to count the blessings that God has given us. When we count, look at your children. How many people are yearning to have children? Look at the job that you have. How many people are jobless out here? Right now, we are talking via television set. How many people are lacking such a message through a television set? And therefore, we need to count our blessings. One songwriter writes and says, a song that we all know, it says that, when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Dear viewer, if you want to acquire peace of mind, you must be ready to count the blessings that God has given you. Are there things that God has kept in your hands? Things? that has given you hope, that has sustained you to this day, these are the things that the Lord wants you to count. And now, there is one more thing that you need to do to claim God's promises. Paul writes in the book of Philippians, which is my last verse today, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Claim God's promise. How I pray today that in all that we do, we will claim the promise of God as written in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Your Bible is a gold mine of God's promises. Are there promises that you've not found in the Bible? Please look for them, they are here. And when you get them, pray about them and you will be having a peaceful mind. The disciples longed for it. Christ gave them when he came the sea. And God is going to come the sea in your life and all shall be well. May God bless you. Hoping to see you again in the next episode in this series, Peace Be Still. Till then, do not change the dial. Keep it here on Hope Channel Kenya for more programs. God bless you and see you next time. Shall we pray? God our Father, take care of us, take charge of our lives and give us peace, this peace that you've promised that pass, surpasses all our understanding. May thy will be done for this our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.